What's up everyone and welcome back to the MMA Zone. Today, let's get started with Sean O'Malley reveals timeline for UFC return. It's going to be a few months yet before Sean O'Malley can begin his mission to reclaim the UFC's bantamweight crown. But recently, Sugar provided an update on his medical condition and when he hopes to throw hands in the octagon again. Following O'Malley's decision loss to Marab Dushvili at UFC 306 last month, he reported he was set to undergo hip surgery. As a result, all the talk shifted to Dushvili facing someone else other than Sugar in his first title defense. Well, more recently, O'Malley announced via his YouTube channel that the surgery went well and that he's chomping at the bit to fight again. Got surgery Thursday, today's Saturday. It's been two days. I feel great. Be back next week, just sparring. I'm gonna, I'm doing, I'm gonna do everything right. I'm gonna recover as fast as I possibly can, and I'm gonna get back. Everyone's like, hey, don't, don't come back too soon. I'm coming back the right amount of soon, but I want to be back ASAP. I want to get these fights in while I'm still, you know young enough. I turned 30 this month, so I want to I wanna recover, do everything right, but I want to get back in there April, May, June latest. Like, June will be latest. Like, I think I can be back before that. March maybe even would be crazy, but who knows? I'm just going with the flow day by day. So if O'Malley is ready to go in early Q2 of 2025, obviously the UFC would be pretty happy about that. Although Sugar is coming off a loss, he remains one of the promotion's biggest names at a time when some folks are questioning whether the UFC is short on stars these days. Of course, the big question is, who will O'Malley face in his return? All signs point to Umar Nurmagomedov fighting Marab next. So if that bout goes down in early 2025 and Dibishvili wins, could O'Malley fight for the title in his first bout back? What do you think? Or do you believe Sugar does not deserve an immediate title shot on his return? Dana White goes off on UFC competitor. For quite some time, Dana White never really went out of his way to diss the Professional Fighters League, which, considering how White has historically talked about many UFC competitors, surprised more than a few people. But clearly, that's all changed here in 2024. Following Francis Ngannou's nasty split with the UFC and his move to PFL, White has increasingly taken verbal jabs at the promotion. But while talking to the media after UFC 307 concluded on Saturday, White really went off on the PFL. The UFC bossman was asked about the PFL's apparent plans to also hold a card at the Sphere in Las Vegas. That prompted White to say the following. I think when you're losing as much money as they are, go for it. Throw, throw the kitchen sink at it. These guys, this guy just came out recently and said, you know, we're going to spend more money than they did on the Sphere. Well, that sounds brilliant. How many tickets are you going to sell? Yeah, they're not very bright. So if I were them, I would do it. Listen, it's all fair. Knock yourself out. They're, they're drowning, drowning. They, they suck. I mean, they're not good at what they do. So it, it, I guess you would just keep trying anything you can to make something stick. It's been interesting to see White shift gears and go into attack mode with the PFL. Although it's not surprising, given one of the UFC's biggest names in Nganu did ultimately sign with the promotion. After the PFL signed a broadcast deal with ESPN, the UFC's current broadcasting partner, some speculated he didn't want to ruffle feathers with the network's brass. But clearly that's no longer a consideration for White if it ever was in the first place. Okay, up next, Joe Rogan reveals what UFC referee said after UFC 307. If you decided to watch something else after UFC 307 wrapped up or had to start making the trek back home, then you didn't hear Joe Rogan's jaw-dropping comments. Well, to be clear, those comments were reportedly from renowned referee Mark Goddard, and Rogan passed them along. Goddard was the referee for the card's main event, which saw Alex Pereira come back from an early flash knockdown and put away the talented and tough Khalil Roundtree in round four. By that point, Poetan had battered and bloodied Roundtree's face. So what did Rogan report? Well, while talking about the main event with Daniel Cormier and John Anik, Rogan relayed the following. I was in the octagon after the fight and Mark Goddard came up to me and he said, I've been doing this for 20 years. The way he hits people, the sound is like nothing I've ever heard before. He said, it's ungodly. That's what he kept saying. He said, it's ungodly. Pereira is just different in every way, shape, or form. I knew this coming into his MMA career. I knew this from kickboxing. This is a different thing you're dealing with. Now, sure, any big MMA fan is keenly aware of how stupidly hard Pereira hits. After all, his kickboxing and MMA highlight reels are filled with examples of him violently turning his opponent's lights out. And in many cases, Poetan has done so with just one shot. But to hear this from Goddard, who Rogan noted has been involved in the game for a couple of decades, is pretty amazing slash alarming. Think of all the legendary and dangerous fighters Goddard has officiated over the years. Where do you think Pereira ranks in the history of MMA, in terms of his power? He's got to be up there, right? 
Alex Pereira plans on taking time off from UFC. Speaking of Alex Pereira, his victory over Khalil Roundtree at UFC 307 almost certainly ensured he will be a top candidate for Fighter of the Year. After all, it was Poetan's third victory in 2024. Not only that, the bout marked the fourth time Pereira has fought in the last 365 days, as his first victory over Yuri Prohaska went down in November 2023. So no one should at all be surprised to hear that Pereira is planning to take some time off. While talking to the media after UFC 307, the light heavyweight champ confirmed that although he loves to fight, he needs a break. I think there's a limit. I want to push myself as much as I can. I'm 37 and I want to take advantage of time, but I do need to take a break. I have some commitment in Mexico and Korea and Malta. I'm going to go hang out with Jorge Guimaraes in Bali, my manager. We're going to take Ed Suarez. I need to take some time off, but I'm going to be training. Not only does Pereira deserve a break because he's been so active, but the star also confirmed after the card that his camp was plagued by visa issues and then illness. In the meantime, I was on antibiotics, I had a fever, I had a bad throat, a lot of things happened. Also, going back when I was in Brazil, I hurt my rib. It was an injury I had about a year ago and it came back, so that was also something I was dealing with. When I came here, my throat was still bad and I went to the doctor and had another round of antibiotics. I even recorded a video at the time. I said in a video, I would show it if I want, so we can put that out at some point, but I went through a lot. Also, the ligament in my toe that was hurt for UFC 300, that came back. So there were a lot of things I went through in this camp, and it was a tough fight, but it was a tough lead up to this fight, and I actually feel really proud of myself in this moment. So based on all this, it sounds like it could be several months before we see Pereira throwing down again, but when he's ready to fight, who will Poetan face? Well, the consensus is that if Magomed Ankalaev gets by Alexander Rakic later this month at UFC 308, it'll be the Dagestani smashing machine. Ankalaev was clearly watching Pereira on Saturday. As after one observer proclaimed there's no way the contender will stand with Poetan, he responded with this, I will strike. Do you believe Ankalaev? Now, technically speaking, maybe he'll strike for periods of the fight, right? But it will be pretty shocking if he doesn't look to take the feared slugger down to the ground. Ilya Topuria calls out Isa Makachev again. Ilya Topuria has to get by one of the toughest outs in featherweight history later this month, Max Holloway. But the outspoken champ continues to talk about battling lightweight king Islam Makachev next. Topuria is booked to fight the legendary Holloway at UFC 308, which is taking place on October 26 in Abu Dhabi. Although the fight will be just his first since he defeated Alexander Volkanovsky to win the featherweight crown, Topuria has been talking about moving up to face Makachev. Case in point, during a recent social media chat session, Topuria was asked again about fighting Makachev. The Georgian and Spanish star made it clear that he still has Makachev in his sights. Of course, I think I can beat Islam. Makachev real soon. Hope Makachev will be next after this fight. On paper, of course it would be fascinating to see how Topuria matches up against one of the most talented and dangerous lightweights of this generation. Islam Makachev responds to Ilya Topuria's recent claims, saying, If Topuria continues in the same spirit, he may play himself out. Something may happen. So far, I have not seen anyone cross any personal boundaries. So far, nothing like that has happened. He needs to focus on his weight class and defending his belt at least once. But as noted, given the Holloway fight would be Topuria's first title defense, it would be pretty surprising if the UFC looked to book that matchup next. All this assumes, of course, that Topuria defeats Holloway and that Makachev beats Armin Sarukian. The consensus is that fight's next for the lightweight champion. But what do you think? Could we see Makachev versus Topuria in the first half of 2025? Roman Dolice talks about UFC altercation with Kevin Holland. Leading up to their scrap at UFC 307, it didn't seem like Kevin Holland and Roman Dolice had any serious beef, but it sounds like that all changed during and or after their bout on Saturday. If you watched the middleweight fight, you know that not long into the fight, it became clear Holland had incurred some sort of rib injury. Dolice dominated the round with ground and pound, and before the second round began, Holland's corner called off the fight. Well, following his win, Dolice spoke with Aaron Bronstetter from Sportsnet, and he was asked about reports of an altercation with Holland backstage. The powerful Georgian fighter confirmed, yes, there had been. You know, I think it's just MMA drama. I always try to be away of it. He was also very nice this uh, fight week, and have, probably he was a little bit angry after losing, and he started some conversation, but I hope uh, when everything was, this will settle down, we can talk and uh, understand what exactly he wants. It'll be interesting to see if Holland or anyone from his camp presents their side on what went down and why. On account of the injury Holland incurred, you'd have to wonder if that factored into why there was some sort of incident. Maybe something was said about the injury and how it played into the fight's outcome. All that aside, hopefully Holland isn't out for too long. You also have to wonder if what happened at UFC 307 closes the book on Holland competing at middleweight versus welterweight. 
UFC Fight Updates Let's take a look at a couple of new fights the UFC matchmakers have reportedly inked. MMA Fighting's Damon Martin recently reported that UFC 309 will feature the Iron Man in action, namely Jim Miller. The rugged veteran, who's competed in a record 44 UFC fights, will battle Damon Jackson. Although Jackson has primarily competed at featherweight, the bout will be contested at lightweight. Miller will be looking to get back on track after dropping a decision loss to Bobby Green at UFC 300 in April. The New Jersey fighter has gone 3-2 in his last five bouts. Jackson, meanwhile, is coming off a decision loss to Chep and Mariscal in April. The Oklahoma fighter has gone 2-3 and three in his last five contests, so both men will be looking to get back to the win column, while Miller will hope to buzz the New York crowd. Team Iridium recently reported that the UFC Vegas 100 card on November 9th will feature a bantamweight scrap between Damon Blackshear and Cody Stamen. Blackshear will be looking to end a two-fight losing skid as he's coming off losses to Montel Jackson and Marios Batista. The North Carolina fighter is 2-3 and three in his last five. Stamen has also dropped two straight. He's incurred losses to Douglas Silva de Andrade and Taylor Lapilus in his last two outings. The Michigan fighter has gone 2-3 and three in his last five. So possibly, could the loser of this fight be issued their UFC pink slip, especially in the case of Blackshear, who's gone 2-3-1 and one in the octagon to date. Stamen, on the other hand, could have some more wiggle room in terms of facing a UFC release. The veteran fighter has been on the UFC roster since 2017, and while he's incurred six losses during that time, two of them came against Aljamain Sterling and Marab Devishvili. No shame in that. Conor McGregor is under investigation after trespassing on the field at an Arsenal game in Emirates Stadium. Arsenal vowed to avoid a repeat of when Conor McGregor was seen play fighting with Bukayo Saka who had asked him to be careful after Connor accidentally kneed him in the arm. This caused an internal club investigation into how Connor was able to get on the pitch in the first place. Arsenal is also looking to distance themselves from the McGregor brand after this incident. Top comments. Alex is a good dude, won't go back down to 185 because he's now teammates with Strickland. That's loyalty right there, not like Snake Covington. I knew Alex was sick. I knew it the second I heard the way his voice sounded and heard all of that coughing. Alex saved the card again. Khalil legit looked like a top 3 fighter against Poetan. When he retires, I can see him winning the belt. 